So I found this thread on Twitter, which I want to share with you. In this thread, another former McKinsey consultant shares his top 10 learnings. The learnings that this person got away from working for several years at McKinsey. And from these top 10 learnings, I now picked the five ones which I thought are the most interesting ones. And I will provide you my commentary, being a former McKinsey consultant as well, whether I agree with what has been shared here. I'm now starting with the first one. By the way, I saved the best for the end, so stick with me. I will now read out what this gentleman wrote and then I will comment on that. So this gentleman writes, there are no experts in business. I have always optimized my decisions for maximum learning, even if tracking backwards in my career, like I did at the time with with the McKinsey move. Before I joined, I had assumed that people in the upper echelons of the business world really knew what they were doing, that they were infused with great wisdom and insights and secret data that the rest of the world didn't know about. Turns out, they are pretty much guessing, much like the rest of us. That's why they hired a bunch of smart young people in the first place. Now I know everyone is just figuring it out on the go. You don't need fancy creds to have that go-getter mindset. So in my very first consulting internship after university, I can still vividly remember the situation. I was on the team spending the first week there. We already had lots of meetings with clients. And I was, of course, very naive at the time. I was 20 when I did my first internship with McKinsey. And at that time, my mindset was, wow, these senior business people, all these leaders in the corporate world, they must be light years ahead of me when it comes to business acumen, when it comes to knowledge, when it comes to problem solving and decision making abilities. And while of course I was young and inexperienced, I very quickly realized that of course the one thing is domain knowledge. Of course someone who has worked in a specific field for 10, 20, 30 years knows a lot of things that you do not know. But this is not to be confused with some type of super intelligence, some type of super abilities that these people have that wouldn't be possible for you to pick up as well. And for me this was quite liberating because after some time I learned that I can just work in a new industry, in another company, work on a different function and very likely after some time looking into it there is at least some part, there are some areas where I can add real value. Next key learning. The basics matter. I bump into all the McKinsey colleagues, this is what this gentleman is writing, who tell me how they are perceived to be very sharp, but in reality they are just all following some simple basics. Steel manning arguments, always having a goal for a meeting, rephrasing a question for clarity, reiterating key insights from an argument that was not well articulated, always summarizing a discussion at the end. It's the optics of the simplest and dullest things that everyone does which makes them seem highly sharp. And this is indeed something that resonates for me quite a lot as well. And to some extent you could argue that this is one of the reasons why some people don't like consultants, right? But what you can for sure not argue against is that many consultants are very good at what people call perception management. Manage the perception that other people have of yourself. There's one saying that is used a lot in consulting and this is that perception is reality. Perception is reality. And you can use this in different ways. Maybe you did a great job at work, you did really excellent work, but if the perception of your team lead, of your client, of your colleagues is that actually you didn't contribute that much, then in the end of the day this will not be perceived well. This is what it means. Perception is reality. But of course you can also look at this from the other way around, right? So if other people have the perception that you are very smart, highly capable, very intelligent, who cares what your real IQ is, right? Who cares? The only thing that matters is that other people have this perception of you. And there are indeed a lot of things that you learn rather quickly in consulting how to manage this perception. I created a video in the past where I talked about some of these also quite dirty, sneaky little tips and tricks that consultants apply. I will link it somewhere above here. Check it out. But this is definitely a skill that is not to be undervalued, especially if you have the goal to really follow a corporate career going forward that will be very important for you. Next insight this gentleman shared, managing upwards. There is a hustle culture. The harder you work, the more you will likely get worked. 
You work in dog years, aka first year at the firm is equated to three years in other industries and companies. That's a nice saying, a dog year, okay? So you sometimes work with multiple partners who all want 100% from you. Pressure is immense. You must be able to manage up or you will implode. Plus, if you do that, you end up getting more respect all around. I have hated confrontations and always looked for peace paths. Then I learned methods like how to say no, how to disagree, how to prioritize, etc. These skills now help me massively to manage expectations and just succeed in my role. And this is very true as well. And also a key learning that you will pick up over the first year or so of your career. In the beginning, you have the perception that you need to please everyone. You need to do everything. After all, you're working for such a firm like McKinsey, BCG, Bain, right? Like clearly you need to do a lot. And of course, it's very difficult, I'd say, to manage it all in a way that really you don't have long working hours. That's true as well. But at some point you need to realize that no, you don't need to say yes to everyone. You don't need to accept every little task that you get. It's absolutely fair to give pushback to your partners, to your project leads. And then of course the interesting thing is where then skill comes into play is how to do it in a way that it's not perceived as you being lazy or it's not being perceived as offensive, but it's actually being perceived as a very fair pushback, a fair contribution. Next learning, you do not need to have all the answers at the start. You're expected to jump cold into new unrelated domains and new business functions, sales, tech, marketing. Things fly in from the left field all the time. I remember one Friday, I was asked to fly out to San Francisco for a week. Next week, I worked on a project in investment banking. All the while I was working on high pressure COVID projects. But again, guess what? You figure it out every time. This changed me. I jump in knowing I figure it out. Again, and this is probably one of the most powerful skills you also learn in consulting. You're confronted with new topics all the time. Topics where you need to work together with people who have decades of experience in this domain. And again, you need to learn to first not be shocked by this, not be paralyzed by this, but to read up on things, make yourself knowledgeable in a short amount of time. Of course, the big consulting firms offer lots of resources on that. You will often have more experienced team members also with the specific industry and function knowledge. You can talk to, you can interview, you will be able regularly to reach out to internal and external experts on the topic. So there's a lot about capability building, looking into the knowledge that you need to pick up. But this, again, empowers you to do this also in other roles. Consultants often are not afraid to step into a new company in a later role, do something they didn't really do before, because again, this is exactly what they will be doing throughout the course of their consulting career. Next learning, and I kept this for the end because this is arguably the most iconic value, the most iconic principle that the firm McKinsey stands for. And this is the obligation to dissent. So as this gentleman put it, Obligation to dissent, a McKinsey value crucial to collaboration and harmony is the obligation to dissent. It's counterintuitive for most. Why would dissent result in more harmony? At the firm, you're not only allowed to disagree with someone more senior than you, but you're also obliged to do so. Meaning from day one, McKinsey expects you to have a point of view and to share it. As such, everyone participates in a meeting sharing their perspective, also very junior people. Remember, you don't have to be right. You just need to have a perspective though. As an immigrant, I have always felt subdued in front of my seniors, giving me a safe environment to voice my thoughts and knowing there would be no judgment, breaking past mental barriers and putting my best work forward. Needless to say, I'm trying to harbor the same environment in my business now. The obligation to dissent, a very crucial piece of information here, right? So it's not only that you have the right to dissent, to contribute your view, disagree if you don't agree with what someone is saying, but you have the obligation, the duty to do so. And what this means is that this creates a culture where indeed everyone is forced to think about the topics all the time. What is my perspective on this? What is my point of view on this? To actually agree what is being put forward here. And then if someone asks me, I need to also, of course, be able to provide reasons why I agree with someone, why I disagree with someone. And this rigorous method, this rigorous school of thought is something that arguably is something that really shapes and influences many consultants working in firms like McKinsey throughout their professional career and a very valuable learning indeed. 
Hope you found this inspiring. Let me know in the comments, are there any other learnings from consulting you'd like to add to that? I would be very interested to read this trust. This is true for all the others here as well. If you took any value out of this video at all, hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm, hit subscribe. Thank you for all the members of From Learning. I will also leave the Twitter handle of the gentleman who posted this in the video description. My name is Heinrich. I release weekly videos here on the channel. See you again next week and bye-bye.